Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. We pray this message inspires you, builds your faith, and shows you how much God truly loves you. If you're ever in the Bartlesville area, we would love to meet you. For more information, visit our website at citychurchok.com. Let's jump into the message. We hope you enjoy. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys, and Merry Christmas. Excited that you're here today, and uh, hope to see all of you in a couple of days on Christmas Eve. It's going to be an amazing uh, time together. Hey, uh, this year we've kind of done things a little unconventionally. Normally, we turn to some texts that deal uh, with shepherds and and uh, angels and Mary and Joseph. And uh, last week, we, we really didn't do that. In fact, the first week, uh, Pastor Jamie didn't do that. I'm not going to do that again today, but the, the story's great. You should get in there. You should read it. Luke's gospel, Matthew's gospel. But uh, for the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of preaching Christmas messages. And uh, I'll tell you, I've never seen uh, something that I saw just this past week just jumped out at me. And that's what we're going to look at today. And uh, as we do, if you would grab your city notes, we're going to jump into it. This is a together thing. This is never a one guy is trying to tell you uh, how to live. We're all in the same boat. Can somebody say amen? amen? And I believe this message is a very timely message. And uh, in fact, just turn to your neighbor, say, it's your time. Go ahead. Awesome. Hey, in Psalms 39 and then echoed in 1 Peter, so all throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, time and God's timing is a theme. Uh, in Psalms 39, the psalmist says, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and I'm here for but a moment more. In fact, the Bible uses all kinds of metaphors for our life down here, a wisp of smoke, uh, like a fog. Anybody have the fog this morning? The fog that rolls in, but when the sun comes up, it dissipates. God says your life is kind of like that. It's also like a, uh, a shadow, a passing shadow. And then one that just really drives it home is like a breath. Yes, you just took a breath. And the Bible says in light of eternity, our life down here on earth is just like one single breath. To me, that's amazing. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 17, it says, if you call God your father, Listen to this, live your time as temporary residents on earth. Live your time, interesting phrase there. So we need to be aware that God has a timetable that we are all living on. And today I really believe that this message is going to encourage so many here today uh, because you're waiting for God to do something in your life. And, it, and it's going to happen in his timing, say in his time. Not your time, not my time, but in his timing, and you can be encouraged by that. Uh, in Galatians chapter 5, excuse me, chapter 6, verse 9, it's on the top of your city notes. This is kind of uh, just dealing with sowing and reaping and, and life and, and all these different things, but it says we can't allow ourselves to get tired of living the right way. I love this. Certainly, each of us will receive everlasting life at the right time if we don't give up. And again, I've looked at the Christmas story year after year after year, uh, and, and, and I've never seen that word time until I looked at it from many different translations, and over 15 times in the Christmas story, it talks about God's time. And Christmas is the reality that at the perfect time, God sent Jesus. He wasn't a day late. He wasn't a day early. It came in the absolute perfect time. Aren't you glad for that? That at the right time, at God's perfect timing, he sent the Savior of this world. He sent his only son not to judge us, not to condemn us, but to do what? To rescue us and to save us. Because every one of us needs a Savior. And so as we look at this today, I want to kind of look in light of the Christmas story, what Christmas reveals about God's timing uh, in our life. And again, I really believe so many here today uh, will be encouraged. Write this first one down if you would. What Christmas reveals about God's timing is first, God has a kingdom schedule for everything. He has a master plan. He has the perfect plan. It says in Ecclesiastes 3.1, there's an appointed time for everything and there is a right time for every activity under heaven. But it is God's appointed time when things happen. Jesus came 
in the, in the story, at the appointed time, at the perfect time, God sent Jesus. And in Galatians 4, verses 3 through 5, it says, when the right time came, the time God decided on, he sent Jesus, his son, born of a woman, born as a Jew, to buy freedom for us. Heaven has a master schedule, and God has initiated that. And it is, like I said, it is a perfect schedule. You say, well, well, well God's late doing something in my life right now. No, he's not late. He's always on time. Well, God should do this and God should have done that. Well, that's why God's God and you're not and I'm not. Can somebody say amen? This thing does not operate on our schedule. You did not choose when you were born. You, did, you didn't choose when you would, well, I guess you chose when you got married. But God orchestrated the whole thing for you and I. God brought us here at the right time. There's no accidents. You're here at the right time. Jesus came at the right time. But we get it in our minds because we live on this planet and this planet rotates around the sun and we have these 24-hour periods and then we take one full lap in a 365-day time period and we are bound by space and time. But God exists out of time. Before time was, God is. God was. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not bound by time or space. He's in complete control of time and space. Even in the Bible, he made the sun stand still, answering a prayer so that a battle could be turned for his victory. There's nothing impossible with God. You heard Pastor Sam talk about it a minute ago. But what we do is we get weary as we wait, we get weary in doing good. We, we start to lose hope. We start to wane in our faith. Why? Because it didn't happen at the time we thought it should happen. But today, for so many of you, I think you're going to be encouraged as we look at this and at the Christmas story that Jesus came at the perfect time. It was heaven's schedule, the kingdom schedule. It's when it had to happen. And even in that, the, the decree that was given, in fact, write the second one down if you would. God doesn't share the details with us in advance. God doesn't share the details with us in advance. Again, we, we live in this microwave world. We live in this Amazon Prime world. We want it within two days or we're complaining. We want this thing to happen right now. But God doesn't share the details with you and I so many times in advance. What he does share with us is his promises. But it's through faith and patience that we receive those promises. Faith and, yes, the P word, patience, that we receive those promises. And some of you say, oh, I've got strong faith. Yeah, but guess what? We need to add to our faith patience and let patience have its perfect work in us. In other words, that while we're waiting, God is working. And sometimes we fail to see that. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but so many of you would. How many of you are believing for loved ones, family, friends, people that are all around you that need Jesus, and it hasn't happened for them yet? While we're waiting, while we're praying, God is working. He is moving. He's doing things behind the scenes that we can't see but it's going to happen in his time. It's going to happen according to the kingdom schedule. It's going to happen, and he does not have to share the details with us ahead of time. In fact, if he gave us the details, we wouldn't need faith anymore. We wouldn't need to trust. We wouldn't need to lean in. And so he does not give us those details in advance. And that bothers you. That bothers me, doesn't it? Come on, let's be honest. We want the details. We want that control. Don't look at me so holy. We want to we know exactly what's happening and when it's going to happen. And, and, and when we don't, we get frustrated. Sometimes we get discouraged. But be encouraged today. God is in complete control. Heaven has the schedule. The kingdom is advancing. What he said he's going to do in your life and in my life, he is going to do it. But it's going to come in his time, and he does not have to share the details ahead of time. Jesus said this, you don't get to know the time 
Timing is the Father's business. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, it's none of your business? Go ahead. That's my paraphrase of this verse. Jesus is saying, listen, it's none of your business. Say it with a little attitude, it's none of your business. It's, none of your, it's not our business. The Father has it in complete control. When we were little babies, we didn't know about schedule. We didn't know about time. We just cried when it was time to eat. We cried when we had something in our diaper. We cried when our brother was tormenting us in our crib, pouring baby powder down our throat. So was that just me? <laughs> but we need to have that childlike faith. Are you with me? We don't have to know all the details. Our kids growing up, they didn't know any of the details. They, they, they didn't worry about where their next meal was coming from. They didn't worry about getting a new pair of shoes. Maybe some of you had to. Sorry for that. Our girls didn't, thank God, by the grace of God. But I'll tell you this. We need to stop worrying and being so anxious because we don't have the details. Christmas happened. Christ came at the perfect time. And God meets our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus Time after time after time again. And what the enemy is trying to get us to do is to get us worrying, get us doubtful, get us discouraged, ultimately get us defeated and depressed. And I want to encourage you today that it's God's, God's going to come through at the right time and he does not have to share those details with us. See, either we're going to trust God's timing and let the Holy Spirit have everything fall into place. Or you and I are going to, we're going to rush ahead. And guess what? When we rush ahead, things fall apart. I would rather things fall in place at the right time than to rush it. And I've seen it in my own life over and over again. Things falling apart. Me falling apart. Why? Because I tried to rush it. I tried to get out ahead. I tried to make it happen. And that's a lack of faith. And whatever's not born of faith is sin. And so I, we become sinful when we're worried, when we're hurried, when we're trying to make things happen. Ultimately, it's pride because I'm playing God. I'm saying, God, I know better than you. I have a better, Scott's schedule is better than the kingdom schedule. That's a lie. It's not. Scott needs to come and submit. Come on, somebody. Underneath God's sovereignty, under his word, under his will, allow his spirit to make things fall into place so that we don't fall apart. Write this next one down if you would. God's timing, I love this, is perfect. He's never early and he's never late. Always right on time. He comes at the perfect moment. In Habakkuk 2, what a great promise for so many of us that have given up on a dream that God has given us. For so many of us that today we can't see like we once saw, we saw a great vision that God had for our future, but this is a great reminder. God says, these things I plan won't happen right away. Listen to this. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, stop there. All of us would say, something seems slow in my life right now. This promise seems stuck. It seems slow. Well, let's keep reading. If it seems slow, what does the word say? Do not despair. Don't freak out. Don't get discouraged. Don't throw in the towel. <laughs> Don't give up. For these things will surely come to pass. By the way, God is speaking here, and what God says is going to happen is going to happen. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. What a great promise for you and for me. We're standing, we're waiting for the, the breakthrough. We're waiting for the freedom. We're waiting for the healing. We're waiting for the favor, waiting for the blessing, waiting for restoration, waiting for whatever it may be. But while we're waiting, he's working. Why? Because he says it will not be overdue a single day. I'd like to even break that down and say it will not even be a second late. God is never late, and he's never early. He's right on time. 
He does not have to share the details of his kingdom schedule with us. What we need to do is trust. What we need to do is keep our eyes on him. What we need to do is is to praise him, come on, through the waiting. Praise him through the pain. Praise him through the diagnosis. Praise him through the lack. Praise him through the dysfunction. Come on, if we would praise him, then guess what? We would be actively waiting and pursuing him. That doesn't mean that we wait and we sit back idle. It doesn't mean that we don't do anything. No, faith is active. Come on, somebody. Hope is something that is, that is living. It's a living hope. Christ is our living hope. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God within us that moves us and prays through us. Even when we don't know how to pray, he's moving. And so even Even in the waiting, God is moving, he's working, and we've got to be able to see that today. That at the right time, Christmas came, Christ came when the world needed him to come. Not a second late, not a second early, but right on time. You know, if you can throw a fastball as a major league pitcher, it's not even just all about the speed, it's also about the timing. And one guy's going to get paid millions and millions and millions, an obscene amount of money to be able to throw that ball if he has the right timing. There's another guy that has a pretty good pitcher, but he's in the minor leagues, and he maybe throws the same speed, but he doesn't have the same sense of timing. You know what he's going to get paid? Hardly anything. Are you with me? This world even recognizes and rewards those that know how to read the time a sense of timing. In baking, timing is everything. Come on, somebody. Amen. I know that personally. <laughs> I've, I've, I've shoved many things in the trash because I overdid it or I underdid it. Are you with me? Just me. Okay, just me. Timing is everything in the kingdom. Timing is what we need to get a grip on, and it's so key to the Christmas story. Over 15 times the word time shows up in the Christmas story as a reminder to you and I that God is in complete control. His timing is perfect. Psalms 145 says, all eyes have turned towards you, waiting in expectation. When they are hungry, you feed them right on time. To me, that says that as we're waiting and looking to God, he's going to meet the need He's going to meet the need right on time as we look, as we wait in expectation. That's what faith is. Sometimes faith is waiting in expectation. It's being patient. It's having that confidence. It's knowing that God is in complete control. Write this next one down. God's timing is not always convenient for us. Can somebody say amen? It's not convenient to wait. I can be a very impatient person. I don't like to wait in lines. God delivered Mary and I and the girls from Southern California from waiting in traffic. <laughs> Praise God. But I still get behind someone who's going 20 miles an hour here in Bartlesville. And I want to say some words. These words are forming. I, it's not raising a hallelujah. It's raising something else. Uh, and, 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 and I can be very impatient. And you go to Walmart, and it's chaos. And there's a spirit of chaos running up and down the aisles. And there's, there's weirdness happening everywhere, but you get to check out. And, and, and even at the self-checkout lanes, there's a huge line. And you're like, okay. But God, his timing is perfect. His promises are true. And, and, and he's not going to share the details with us, but as we wait, I know it seems very inconvenient. In fact, look at this from the Christmas story, Luke 2. At that time, Caesar Augustus ordered all people under Roman rule to return to their hometown to register in a census. So Joseph, so Joseph, it says, so Joseph took, it says time, took Mary with him to Bethlehem, and by this time, she was very pregnant. So get this, she's very pregnant. And what does Joseph say? Honey, tomorrow I'm going to need you to get up on the donkey. (laughs) And we're taking a long journey. Are you kidding me? 
Are you kidding me? How inconvenient for this big pregnant gal to get up on a donkey and take a long journey to their ancestral homeland. But it was the perfect timing. Why? Scripture had to be fulfilled that the baby was going to be born in Bethlehem. And this was God's plan. It was the furthest thing from convenient for Joseph and Mary. In fact, for the whole, all of Israel. Have you ever seen the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? If you haven't, you're backslidden. It is a great movie. <laughs> but it would be like we all had to go back tomorrow to where we were born. That means I would have to try to find a way to get back to Flint, Michigan. That's where I was born. And, I, and it would be chaos. There was chaos happening, but what, was, what, was, what, what do we know? God was in complete control. It was at the right time, but it's not convenient for you and I. Write this one down. God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. We really should add however he wants. God says in Isaiah 60, I am the Lord, so when the right time comes, I will make it all happen quickly. God is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere all the time. That's mind-blowing. God is omniscient. That means he knows everything, past, present, and future. He doesn't exist in time or space, but he knows it all. So he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's also omnipotent, which is he has all the power. He's got all the power, which means he is not limited by anyone or anything. He is unlimited. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, because he is king. He is ruler. He is the sovereign Lord. He, he speaks it, and it, it, it comes into existence. He spoke this world into existence. And notice that it says it can happen quickly. That's why we're waiting, we're waiting, we feel like it's forever. And maybe it, it, maybe it has been a long time, but guess what? One, one order from God, one word from God can happen immediately. And that's where we need to put our hope and faith. That's where our trust needs to be. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. He is beyond limitations. Nothing is too difficult for him. Psalms 145 echoes this. God is magnificent. He can never be praised enough. There are no boundaries to his greatness. Generation after generation stands in awe of your work. Each one tells stories about your mighty acts. I don't have time this morning. We could go through the scriptures and look at all the different impossible things that God made possible. Because nothing is impossible with God. And in our life, we need to understand that God's timetable is perfect. And it's going to happen when he wants it to happen in our lives. God says this in Isaiah 49, verse 8, At the right time, I will answer your prayers. Could somebody say amen? At the right time. When is the right time? We don't know. It's not convenient. But at the right time, God is going to answer our prayers. He's not going to be late. He's not going to be early. It's going to be right on time. You say, well, God, hurry up. Don't say, God, hurry up. Just praise him. Just thank him. There's a story in the Old Testament and, oh, before I get there, let me share a couple of quotes with you. Sorry. Look at C.S. Lewis. He says, I'm sure that God keeps no one waiting unless he sees that it is good for him to wait. Back to the Max Licato quote, waiting is sustained effort. Listen to this. To stay focused on God. That's the key. To stay focused on God through prayer and belief. See, waiting for God isn't laziness. Waiting for God isn't being idle. It's not the abandonment of effort. It's that God has given us a promise. God has given us, if you want to say it this way, some marching orders, and we're going to march to that. And until he gives us different orders, we just keep marching. Come on, somebody. It's active. It's not lazy. It's not just, just sitting back going, oh, well, I guess maybe someday, some time it'll happen. No, it's that I have this promise, I believe this promise, and I'm just waiting for him to fulfill the promise. 
and it will be fulfilled. And like he said in, in Habakkuk, it won't even be a single day late. It's coming at the right time. In the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles 20, write all these things down real quick as we close with this, because I really believe we need to pass the test, and it's really the waiting test. Write these five things down if you would. There's a story about King Jehoshaphat, and he has three armies. In fact, it's a weird Christmas text to read, but I'd encourage you this week, read 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It will encourage you. Three different enemy armies gang up, and they're coming against him. And he really does not have the time (laughs) to mess around, because they're coming quickly. But what he does is he turns to God first. This is a game changer for so many of us. We forgot that we need to turn to God first. He turns to God and he starts praying. That's talking to God. And in fact, he gets the whole nation praying with him. And in his prayer that he prays before the nation, he says this, are you not the God? Will you not do what you've done in the past? God, we need you to show up. And at one point, he gets really honest with God. We need to tell God the truth. Some of us in our prayers, we need just to be honest with with God with where we're at. Say, God, maybe you need to just admit, I'm tired of waiting. I've lost my hope. I've lost my joy. I've lost my patience. But in, in this Bible passage, the king says to God, he says this, Lord, we don't know what to do. We, we don't know what to do. But the next thing he says is, but our eyes are on you. Sometimes when we're waiting, we don't know what else to do. But waiting is anticipation, it's expectation. But God, my eyes are on you. I see you. You're all I need. I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. And then what happens? Then we start to trust again because we see him. Come on, somebody. We see the king. We see his majesty. We see his unlimited power. We know that he's in complete control. And even though we want it now, he's going to give it to us when we need it. And we've got to be okay with that. And we trust him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We trust in his word. We trust in his promise. And then you want, to, you want to take it to another level. Start to thank him in advance. And that's what Hezekiah did. Instead of sending out an army, you know what he does? He sent out the praise band. Come on, somebody. That's a crazy move. But he says, let's sing out the singers. Let's send them out. Let's let them start to praise God. Let's all praise God. Let's start to thank him that he's in complete control. Come on, that he hasn't forgotten about us. That what he's done for us before, he'll do again. And he'll do it again. And he'll do it again for our entire life, all the way through eternity. Because he's promised me not just life here in this world, but Jesus said abundant life, which is the life that is yet even to come. I can have abundant life now, but I also get eternal life. He's got me in his grip, and he's not letting me go. Isaiah 49, 24, God says, you won't be disappointed if you trust me. (laughs) Hebrews 10, 23, it's on your City notes, we can trust God that he will do what he promised. We can trust God that he will do what he promised. Christmas is a reminder of this. God promised salvation and he delivered. God promised freedom and he delivered. God promised favor, he delivered. God promised grace, he delivered. God promised healing, Come on, somebody. He delivered. And guess what? He's going to deliver what you need in your life. If you're here today, you've never given your life to Christ, I want to encourage you. God offers you eternity. What an opportunity. What a promise. Not just life now, but life forever. It says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, right now, I love that, right now, God is ready to welcome you. Today, he is ready to save you. That's the one thing about God. He's always ready to save. Anytime anybody cries out in prayer to him, it's an immediate response. It's a yes. In Jesus, it's a yes and it's an amen. Would you bow as we close in prayer, friend? If you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ, it's clear today, right now, God is offering you his grace. Jesus has already come 
And he was born and he lived a perfect life. And then he gave up his life. Nobody took it from him. And he gave up his life for you and for me. And he died a brutal, horrible criminal's death so that we could live. He paid it all in full so that we could be forgiven and free. So today, God's offering you salvation. And really what that is, is it's forgiveness, it's freedom, and it's a life of fulfillment, living his way. And not just for this lifetime, but for eternity. I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's not based on what you've done, it's based on what Jesus has done. It's not based on what I, what I can do and our good works, it's based on grace. It's based on what he's already done for us. Maybe you're here today and you've been running from God, but you find yourself here today back in church. Friend, we're so glad you're here. Most importantly, God is so glad. He's not mad at you. He misses you. And with open arms, he receives you back. So if you need to give your life to Christ for the very first time, or if you need to come back to Christ and reconnect and recommit your life to him, today, right now, is the moment of salvation for you. With no one looking around, if that's you, you'd say, Scott, would you pray for me? I need, I need Jesus today. Where are you today? Would you just raise up your hand? Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. You guys can put your hands down. Anybody else? Say, Scott, I need Jesus today. I believe that right now is my moment. Where are you today? Anybody else? Awesome. Let's all pray. Let's say this prayer together with believing hearts. Would you, let's all say it, pray it out. Say, God, I believe you sent Jesus to save me from my sins. So right now, I invite you into my life. Forgive me and set me free from my past. Today I receive your love. Today I receive your grace and your eternal life. In Jesus' name, everybody said, come on, put your hands together. Let's lift them up. Thanks again for joining us. We love the small part we get to play in helping you on your journey with God. Email us at info at citychurchok.com if there's anything that we can do to help you with the next step. Also, if you've enjoyed the message, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Have a great day. Join us again next week.